Hallelujah. 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 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come against me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. Why? Because one thing have I desired of the Lord. That is what I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Welcome this morning, those online and those in the house, to the worship experience of the Friendship Pasadena Church family. If you're glad that you're just able to be in a place where people are going to worship God in spirit and truth, can you just put your hands together? Father God, we bless you and we thank you. For you alone are God. You alone are worthy of our praise. And so we bring it before you. We present ourselves before you, Father God, as living sacrifices. And we pray that you accept our worship. We pray that you accept our prayer. We pray that you accept our praise, for we offer it unto you, Lord, as humbly as we know how. Forgive us, Lord, of all our transgressions, things we've thought, things we've done, things we failed to do, so that there might be today an open heaven. Pour out of your Spirit upon us today in increasing measure. And we'll be ever so careful to give you the glory in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. amen. Let's get up on our feet. Y'all ready to go? Let's go. Let's go. Give him praise today. Yeah. Hey, Good morning, friendship in the house. Good morning. Good morning. Friendship online. Are we ready to worship the Lord? Are we ready to give him glory? Look at somebody say, I'm ready. Are you? Hallelujah. Somebody shout the name Jesus. Come on, shout the name Jesus. The name that makes a difference, the name that brings joy and peace in everything that we need. I love to call the name. What about you? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Listen. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your Anybody know that to be true? There is power in the name of Jesus. Ah, there's power in the name. Look at your neighbor and sing it to him. There is, there is power in the name of Jesus. Name of tell Jesus. Him, there's power in the name. Power in the name. Turn around and tell somebody else. There is power, there is power in the back. You know it? Come on. There is power in the name.
Jesus when I'm lonely. Jesus when I'm sick. Jesus when I'm down. You lift me up, God. I give you the glory. We bless your name, Jesus. You're all we needed for. Everything we hope for. Everything we pray for. Everything we believe for. Jesus. Jesus. Hold on, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. Jesus, Jesus. I couldn't help but think while we were calling that, that name. I think sometimes Hallelujah. we get our mind, we're just repeating something. Yeah. And what's the, what's the value in repetition? I couldn't help but thinking about Jericho. Everybody in here probably knows the story of Joshua and Jericho. Jericho was the, was the first largest obstacle in the promised land that stood in the way of God's purpose being fulfilled. Now Israel didn't have a didn't have a, a trained military per se. They had fighting men, but they didn't have all of the all of the things that you might think a, an army might have. And so God gives them this strategy. He said, I want you for six days just to walk around it. Don't say a word, just surround it. Make, make your problem the focal point. Listen, if you ever want justification for your problem being the focal point, here it is. Walk around your problem. Walk around this obstacle. See, watch this. Because to you it might be a problem. To God, it's an opportunity. And so for six days they walked around saying nothing. But then on the seventh day, they walked around it seven times, and then they let out a shout. Sometimes what your praise is, especially when you repeat it, you're just surrounding your problem with the problem solver. You're surrounding your obstacle with the mountain mover. So sometimes that's why we keep calling Jesus, because some of your problems are stuff. Anybody got stubborn problems? Anybody got a problem that just won't want to seem to move? You know what you need to do? You need to keep praising God anyway. You need to call in that name because the Bible says every knee shall bow in heaven and earth at, at that name. So just a couple more times. I want you to think about your biggest problem. Come on. I give you permission today. Not that you need my permission. Focus on your problem. Focus on your pain. Get that thing you want God to move out of your heart and just... Put it at the center of your vision right now. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Then for the next few minutes, I just want your mouth to surround it with Jesus. I want you to bombard it by calling Jesus. Don't just put Jesus in the air, aim it at your Jericho, aim it at your diagnosis, aim it at your pain, aim it at your problem. And with every word, just think, God is shaking it. And in the soon season, it's going to collapse if you believe. So come on, a couple more times. But this time, focus on the problem, but also the problem solver. Can we give Jesus, come on, just a little more focus. When I call your name. When I call. Yeah. 
place. God, you're mighty in this place. God, you're faithful in this place. God, you're awesome in this place. We bless your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. Will you take a moment and worship the Lord for who he is in your life? Not for just the things that he's done, but just for being our God. He is faithful. He is everything that we need and more. So with the fruit of our lips, can we give him a hallelujah? Can somebody just say, thank you, Jesus? Somebody lift up a Lord, I love you in this place. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you're better than good. We can't praise you enough, even if we try. God, because you've been so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been so good to me. You've been so faithful, Lord. We praise you. And we thank you in this place on purpose. Oh, you've been so good to me. Oh, sing, Lord, you are good. You are good. You've been so good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good.
many ways you made, Lord. So many times you healed us. So many times you brought us out. So many times you brought us over. So many times you brought us through. It was you, oh God. We don't take the glory. We recognize your love. We recognize your grace. We recognize your power. We know that it was you, oh God. And for this, we give you the glory. For this, we lift you up. For this, we praise your name. For this, we honor your presence. We honor who you are. Because of who you are, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah. 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 It was yesterday that my daughter was going down the freeway. And there was a truck, two cars ahead of her. A gardening truck. And on the back of that truck was a wheelbarrow that fell off the back of the truck. And the car in front of her had just enough room to move. But she did it, and that wheelbarrow hit her head on. It could have went another way, y'all. No scratches, no bruises, no car flipping over. But the goodness and the grace and the mercy of God, it could have been another way, y'all. I could have been a sad mama this morning, but instead I'm one praising mama, giving God the glory, because it could have went another way. On last Sunday, Courtney was on her way to church and her car hydroplaned and hit the center divider. But she's here today giving God the glory. She's giving God the honor. What is your testimony? What is your story? What has the Lord done for you that you would lift your hands, that you would lift your voice, that you would sing his glory, that you would sing his praise? You've been good, God. You've been good, God. You've been good, God. We bless your name today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You move mountains. Yeah, 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 yeah. You cause walls to fall oh. with your power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. So we're standing here only because. Come on, you move. You, you move. move you cause walls to fall. You cause walls. With your, power, with your power, perform miracles. Perform miracles. There is nothing, there there is nothing that's, impossible. that's impossible. That's impossible. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because. Come on, come on. Listen. It's one thing for somebody to tell your story. Come on, but you hear. It's something else entirely. You hear for To hear it ah. from the one who saw God move. Can he just, just kind of, you know, you know what to do. Um, I was on my way to church, <laughs> and um, I was driving down the 110. I think it had just finished raining, and um, I was on my way to church. When I'm on my way to church, I'm listening to the songs we're going to sing, trying to prepare myself for worship. I'm praying, and all of a sudden, my car just felt like it lifted up off the ground. Um, it spun into the overpass wall, slammed into that, bounced off, and spun into the middle divider. And I was screaming the whole time. I just screamed and I said, help me, help me. And I told my sister that and she said, well, did you say help me, Jesus? And I said, no, because I was already talking to him. Mm. Like I was already in praise and worship. He knew, he knew what I meant. And um, I'm just so grateful that he kept me. And it's like, 
while I was driving, there were cars with me, but when that happened, all the cars disappeared. There was no one around me. There was no one to hit me, and I know that was nothing but God. Um, there was another accident on the other side of the freeway, right by me, and there happened to be a police officer going to that accident. By this time, cars were going past me really fast. I was kind of in two lanes, because the front of my car was smashed into the wall, and the back was in the um, third lane and the middle lane. And the officer was on his speaker and he's like, are you able to move your car? And I said, no, I tried to start it, reverse it, it wouldn't move at all. So he's like, okay, put it in neutral and I'm gonna move you off the freeway. So he moved me off the freeway, he stayed with me till my mother got there and just got me out of harm's way. He was like, I was so worried that someone was gonna hit you because people drive crazy. There were even people honking at me and I'm like, obviously I cannot move. <laughs> My hazards are on, but um, I text Sister Candace and let her know what was going on. I was able to turn on for a little bit before I had to call AAA and hear that you guys were praying for me. And I was shaken up, but it really lifted my spirit. I wanted to be here on Sunday, but um, God knows my heart. And I know that the devil was mad because he Come thought on. that was going to do something. Come on. It didn't stop anything. And I'm here today to worship. Come on. And I'll be here next week, God willing. So I'm just grateful to be here. And, and thank you, Pastor, for your Come prayers. And, and thank you, all of you. So we're standing here only because you made a Made up. Come on, can you throw your hands up and say God made a way when your back was against the wall and it looked as if it was all you made a way, made a way, made a way, and we're standing here and we're standing only because you made you made you made you made Listen, that is a perfect opportunity for a segue right into not only through our prayer, praise, and worship, but to come and say, Lord, thank you that you made a way. Come on. Brother Bill Johnson is in the house today. At least he was a minute. Where's Brother Hallelujah? Come on. Brother Bill had a stroke not too long ago and had to go through all the processes of rehab, but come on. How many of you know God can make a way out of nowhere? I'm not calling you up, Brother Bill. Come on up to pray. Hallelujah. As we all, can you make your way to the altar today? Can we all come and stand around Brother Bill and stand around those? Watch this. If you need God to make a way, if you're still waiting for your way to be made, come on, he's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Hold on, Brother Bill. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a mountain mover. Come on. God is a way maker. Come on. And we're standing here. And we're standing here. Only because. Only because. You, you made a way. You made a way. Should have known. When your backs were against the wall. When your back was against the wall. And it looked, like it and it looked as if it was all. You made a way. You made a way. Come on. Press in. Standing here. And we're standing here only because Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Now listen. I know you can tell a story, brother. But just come on. Just give us a give us a word. They need to hear your voice today. Come on. Well, it's just good to be back in the house of the Lord. I thought I was in pretty good shape. You know, the type of job I've had, the type of things I do, you have to be in pretty good shape. But guess what? You need to shape on this on God's team. Yeah. Uh, on the 26th of December, I'm coming back from the Keg Medical Center, and I had a stroke. Luckily, I made it to Alhambra, and I couldn't find my vehicle. And so... People took pity on me. They called my daughter. She came and found me and said, Daddy, you look like something's wrong with you. I'm going to take you to Huntington 
me being a firefighter for 31 years, I said, don't take me to the hunter, the sweetheart. They'll triage me. There'll be 100 people there. Take me to Carcadian Methodist. And she did. I had a stroke. I couldn't find my truck. But since I'm, I knew I'm on God's team, I wasn't really worried. But, and I'm not bragging. I put it in his hands. This was not the first time I put my life in God's hands. When you've been in the military and you're sent overseas and you're put in a combat situation, you better be in God's hands. I know you're on your military team, but you better be on God's team. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Long story short, I went to therapy in the hospital. I was able to sign documents and do therapy and when I came home I did 12 more days and uh, brother David lived up the street from me it's about a mile from my house I walk up to his house and back every day so I'm, I'm, I'm on my way back and I give all the credit to God it was so good to hear the music Pastor Smith's voice the voice of the choir it's just good to be home and if you think you don't need God, try to go a few days without Him. You'll find that you really do. Many of us are not on God's team by default. and we just don't know any better. But when you hear the word from Pastor Smith, he's always been good at that. If when, when you come to church, it's like gassing up. If you're a little shaky, you come to church, you should get go from my shakiness to know to where you stand. It's not, in other words, in order to be on God's team, you have to give up that, that personal life. That's right. If you're not willing to give that up, you're not on God's team. I'm going to tell you, and that's the what I call default. All right. All right. Anyway, happy to be back. God bless. Good to see all of you. I'm sorry I missed Sister Jackson going home service yesterday, but I loved her. She loved me. And uh, we're going to miss her. I saw Joey at the market. He told me that he had been to the service and he sang. I'm sorry I missed that, but I'm glad to be home. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Come on. Bread for the hungry, water for the thirsty, light in the darkness, love for the loveless, peace for the confused. You are everything, oh God, that we could ever ask, think, or imagine. So we bring before you now, Father God, again, just us. Here we are, as we are, standing in the presence, O oh God, as you are, for you alone are able, O oh God, to do more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And we bring before you now, Father God, first and foremost, our gratitude, our thank yous, our hallelujahs for being able Lord just to know that you exist an infinite amazing incredible God who sits above the earth who sits beyond time itself saw fit to make yourself known 
to us. You wrapped yourself up in the person of Jesus Christ. The Word who was with you forever became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. That is the only begotten Son of God. We've seen, O oh Lord, what can happen when Jesus comes in. We've seen sight restored to the blind. We've seen hope restored to the hopeless. We've seen protection provided for your people. We've seen you do amazing and incredible things. And so first, before we ask you for anything, Lord, we thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for the activity of our limbs, oh God. Thank you for the healings that you've already manifested in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for the, the dangers that we saw and even those that we didn't see. For you are our great shepherd, our good shepherd. You walk with us, Lord, through the green pastures. You walk with us, Father, through the valley of the shadow of death. You bless us, Lord, when we're on the mountaintop. And you bless us, Father God, when we're in the valley. So I stand here today, Father God, as someone interceding on behalf of those that are crying out to you on their own. You hear, O oh Lord, even the faintest whisper that is offered in faith. You hear those, Lord, and all they can do is cry. And you can interpret the tears as they roll down our cheek. You know the pain. You know the disappointment. You know the things, Lord, that we can't even find words to express. Your word says, Father God, that sometimes all we've got is a groan in our spirit. Words, O oh Lord, can't express what we desire to say, but your spirit interprets that. You hear our cries. You hear our groans. You know our pain. You know our weakness. And so in Jesus' name, O oh God, we just wrap that all up and lay it at your feet today. You know where the needs are, Lord. You know where the sickness lies. You know where the pain comes from. You know where the fear emanates from. You know where the doubts originate, oh Lord. You know the problem, even while we don't. And so we come before you, Father, knowing that you're able. Believing, oh God, that you desire to heal us today. So for those, oh Lord, that are dealing with physical pain and sickness in their body, I lift them before you even right now. And I pray in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will cause every tumor to shrink and be removed. I pray, oh God, that you will cause every pain to be wiped out. I pray, Father God, in Jesus' name, that your will would be done today. That your kingdom would come today, right here, right now. That somebody might know, Father God, by the touch of your hand, that they have been in the presence of the true and the living God. Thank you for a building that we can assemble in. Thank you for believers that we can hold hands with. Thank you for brothers and sisters, oh Lord, that come to our aid but we thank you that you are our provider we thank you that you are God and beside you there is no other and so I pray father for your glory to be seen today let us catch a glimpse of your goodness let us turn our attention now away from our problems and look unto you like David said let us look unto the hills from where does our help come from our help comes from you my help all of my help comes from you so help the helpless oh God heal deliver move speak manifest show yourself mighty strong gracious merciful long suffering kind everything that we need you are that but you are a consuming fire and I pray that as we throw ourselves upon the altar oh God that you would burn out of us everything that is not like you purify our hearts cleanse us wash us then fill us with your spirit and we will bless you forever and ever in Jesus name can somebody let out a shout of praise right about now
and thank God in advance for what he's done. And we're sad. given a formula on how to deal with your biggest obstacles. Israel didn't know, Joshua didn't know how the walls fell. He just simply did what God said to do. And the walls came crashing down. If you will put again, put put. Put the word to work in your life. The Bible says this. Abraham faced the fact, you've heard me say this many times, faced the fact he was an old man and that his wife was old. But he did not waver in unbelief. But he was fully persuaded that God could do what he promised. Faith does not ignore facts. The doctors have given you some facts. We're not ignoring them. The circumstances have dictated facts. You are where you are by a series of circumstances, and it is a fact. But faith looks beyond the facts. Faith is not dictated to by facts. The walls of Jericho were solid. The walls of Jericho were fortified. The city was in lockdown mode. It was impossible in the natural for anything to happen. But you know what God told Joshua to do? And it might be semantics. Y'all should know this. Come on, friendship. I've said this so many times, and so you should know exactly where I'm going. When God takes Joshua to look to view Jericho, according to the translation that I use, God did not say look. 
God said, see, I have given you this city. If you look at it, it looks impossible. But if you can see it, the Bible says, do not look at the things that you can see, but look rather at the things which you can't see. Because what you can see can change. What you can't see won't. What you can't see is the invisible hand of God. What you can see is the walls come tumbling down. What you can see is the tumor on the x-ray. What you can't see is God doing incredible things. So here's what I want you to do. Don't worry about your problems. They're very, very real. doesn't say to ignore them. But put the word to work. Somebody put it like this. The word works when you work the word. That's what Paul said to Timothy. Study to show yourself approved. Watch this. Not unto men, but unto God. A workman who does not need to be ashamed. Rightly dividing or properly applying the word of truth. And when you learn how to apply the word, come on, mountains move. Giants fall. Demons tremble. Can you thank God for just a possibility that you can see transition and change in your life? So again, to those in the house and those online, we welcome you to the worship experience of Friendship Pasadena. I never want that to become cliche. We want this to be an experience, not just a service. Thank God for worship services. But my prayer is that you will experience God every single time you come into his presence, whether it's in an organized fellowship like, like this or maybe driving down the street in your car. Maybe when wheelbarrows fall off of trucks. Because who knows what Satan has in store. You know that Satan is like a roaring lion, right? That he's out, that he's out there. But I ain't worried. I ain't scared. Because I declared when I got here, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And you know something? Satan will take you up on your words. He'll say, oh, really? You all that? Every time I say that, I expect an obstacle to come. But I'm standing here only because God, anybody else, God, make a way for you. Praise him for the way that, that, that he's making. Hallelujah. On this first Sunday in April, we thank God that God has let us see another month according to our calendar. This week's prayer theme is taken from St. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said to those who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. We're praying for Sister she Shelly Johnson, healing from heart surgery, who's at home, amen, this past Thursday, but we're praying for her con continued healing. We're praying for Sister D Dolores Ware's grandson-in-laws in North Carolina. Her mother-in-law passed away last November from breast cancer last Monday. Her brother-in-law took, wow, his brother-in-law took the life of his wife, 12-year-old son, and then himself. That's not just something you just put out in the air. And mental health is real. So is demonic presence. We pray for those dealing with mental health issues. And we need to direct them to genuine mental health care. But we as believers in Jesus Christ, God gives us the authority in spiritual realms. And I say this cautiously, I say this carefully. You can't medicate a demon. A demon must be cast out. They mentioned on yesterday 
And again, I believe we need to begin to flow and act and think and believe in this, in this way. Y'all remember Sister Beth, we eulogized her, we're praying for her family, one of a homegoing ceremony, but we were reminded of the miracle that took place in this house. She had a, had a tremor in her hand that she had nicknamed Mona. And we used to say, used to kind of jokingly say, well, that's just Beth with her. Mona prays. God put it on my heart. Mona's got to go. We prayed. Beth was sitting right down here in a wheelchair, surrounded. I said, we prayed. I prayed too, but we prayed. And we witnessed that trembling hand stop. That was just an inkling of the power of what happens when God's people pray. So please, don't limit God and don't limit the importance of God's people praying. When we come together in agreement, mountains move. When we come together in agreement, trembling hands can still themselves. When we come into agreement, I still believe blinded eyes can open, that the lame can walk the mute can talk, that those oppressed by these spirits of anxiety and depression and oppression that are plaguing an entire generation, yes, thank God for mental health, but thank God for Holy Ghost power. Is anybody glad that you got some power in this place? Let's pray for them. Let's pray for Sharon Penix's mother, healing from a broken foot, for the family of our former co-worker, my good friend, Brother Clayton Turner, passed away last week. Continue prayers for the family of our dear sister, Sister Beth Jackson. Pray for those on our prayer list. I would love um, our if uh, prayer team, if we could, uh, if we could accumulate um, a list that, that I could get, that we can get, that we can begin to kind of put the names of those on our prayer. We have a prayer team. We have a prayer list. Matter of fact, all of us are on the prayer team. But I believe that sometimes we need to call those people by name. Because there are, I know there are some friendship family people that are listening that would have loved to hear their name. Because I'll forget somebody, I want you to know, Friendship Pasadena Online, we have not forgotten you. We're praying for you. Connect with us through the church office and people will somehow reach out and make known to you that we're not only here in the spiritual realm we want to show up we want to be there for you so let's pray oh, while I'm at it we're praying for brother uh, Harry Moten dealing with a, uh, an issue a disease in his body that is that is uh, very very serious and we just need to pray for his for his mental health we need to pray for his spiritual well-being we need to pray for his wife and his family, Sister Bobby, and for everybody. Watch this. We are praying for caregivers as well. Because we know that there are people that are just giving and giving, and sometimes it's hard. It's hard to watch those that you love go through. But that's what family is. That's why it's so important to be, so important to be a part of a church family. We minister to everybody. We come to the aid of our own, prayerfully, quick, fast, and in a hurry. So make sure again that we are praying for each other. Uh, young Adult Ministry, again, uh, we thank God for Young Adults. Uh, Pastor Jacques wants to meet. Come on, there's one person that's, that's happy for Young Adult Ministry. Pa Pastor Jacques is asking that, again, you meet again down, downstairs um, to continue planning. Uh, and we are going to, uh, again today, with our Excellence in Service Award, acknowledge yet another one of our members, just to kind of to remind us of why it is that, again, the brainchild of Pastor Gary, but the absolute leading of the Spirit of God, for us to acknowledge those who serve well. We both, just this morning, were talking about some of our recipients who have actually told us, I've never been acknowledged. No one has ever even literally told me thank you for the work that we are doing. And we know that when we do this, there's going to be some that, that may feel like we're overlooking uh, you. Watch this. Let somebody know. It might sound weird. Nominate yourself. 
Come on, somebody. Now, I've been working around this church. Tell somebody that can make it happen. Listen, don't complain to people that can't do nothing but complain with you. Say, what about me? And we might say, you know, what about them? But here today, we are going to bless somebody else that is serving well in this place. Pastor Gary, can you receive Pastor Gary as he comes to bless us yet again? And we got another red button. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mic check. Is, is, is that me? There we go. Good morning, Friendship Family. Good morning, good morning Friendship Family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want to point out once again, you see the cross that's there on the altar. There's three letters there. I-H-S. In his service. In the service of the Lord. We serve through our church, but we're serving the kingdom of God. Every week I try to come up with a little something so that you can possibly guess the person's name. So if you've ever looked at television and you wanted something done, there's a, a list. And they have a name for that list. If you need to get some help around your house, they have a name for that list. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. Does anybody know what the name that's on that commercial Angie's List. Today's recipient is Sister Angie Ellis. <laughs> Tireless, continuing to work and work and work. And don't worry, there's 52 Sundays in a year. We're only in April. So if you continue to serve, we are going to see you, and you will indeed be recognized. Yes, Elder, you have something you want? Come on down here. Yes, come on down here. Morning, friends. Uh, Elder Kevin Earl, my downline is the uh, marketing, and I really work closely with, or serve closely with the media ministry. I just wanted to say something really quick before giving, uh, awarding Angie this award. Um, in serving with the media ministry, um, really have got to learn everything that they do. I think I might have even said this last time I was up here, and I'm just amazed at the everything that they put into service, um, not just on Sunday, everything they do leading up to Sunday, uh, using their weekend time to be here. And one of the first meetings we had, I heard everything that Angie did to get everything on the overhead, uh, in the live stream. And, and it's more than just, you know, copy and pasting and putting a presentation together. And even if it was just that, it's still a lot. And I think I stopped the meeting three times to be like, you, you do all of that like, every week? And even up until yesterday, I, I wanted to make sure she was here, and I asked her another question, and I was just said I wanted to, to chat with you again because I had another process question. I don't really have a question. I just wanted to make sure you were here to receive this award. But once again, it's, it's just amazing everything that Flo and the media ministry do, and we just really wanted to make sure we recognized you um, and the whole media ministry, but congratulations again. Okay. Awesome. All right. All right. All right. This certificate recognizes that Sister Angie Ellis has provided volunteer service to Friendship Pasadena Church, serving in the media ministry and other ministries. Congratulations. And a little something from your friendship family. You want to say something? Thank you. I love you all. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. There you go. Come on. Thank God for those who serve well. Hallelujah. And we're also in prayer for Brother Bryson. We just got word about your, your grandfather passed away, and you're going to be 
going to go see family. So again, brother, prayers of, of tr travel and blessings on you. But that's what family does. We acknowledge those who, who serve well. And again, for far too often, um, we really weren't uh, showing the kind of gratitude that really lets people know how valuable you are. I want to encourage every single person that serves in this fellowship. We appreciate you. We could not do what we do at the level that we do it without you. There are no unimportant parts. There are no, watch this, there are no small people. There's only small minds. And so we want to make sure that, that you know how vitally important you are. Friendship is who we are because of you. So thank God for Sister Angie. Thank God for all who serve. And look forward to us calling your name one of these Sundays and blessing on you. But again, welcome to the Friendship Pasadena Church family. If anybody's here for the first time, would you kindly bless us and honor us just by standing because we've got some information we want to give you about us. We want to get some information about you. We want to just show you some special love. Anybody here for the first time, would you just, God bless you. Please remain standing just for a moment. God bless you. Please remain standing just for a moment. Amen, 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 amen. Could you kindly just give us your name and what might have brought you uh, just shout out. Dorothy and Jacob, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming, Jacob. Yes. All right, well, welcome. Thank God for friends. Thank God for friends that bring friends to church. And so again, on behalf of the entire Friendship Pastor in the church family, those in the house and those online, there are some more of us, but... They just, for whatever reason, didn't make their way to the house today, or maybe they're on the way. But we truly are grateful that you saw fit to worship with us today, and we pray that you will have a genuine experience and an encounter, first of all, with people that are genuine, with people that love you and are concerned, but even more importantly, that the Spirit of the living God, the God that we serve and worship, will make Himself known to you. But the friendship folks that are right uh, around you, either those you came with or those right near you, uh, they go going to reach over, touch you on your shoulder, and say welcome to friendship. We also want to invite you when service is over to meet me and a few of your elders and a few of your, your pastoral staff in the Welcome Center. That's that room right there where uh, Deacon Walker is waving so wonderfully. Amen. We want to meet you there. We've got some re refreshments and more information. But again, we welcome you. Friendship, can you just show some love? Show some love and some gratitude for those that are in the house. So, Friendship Pasadena, you know that what we're seeking to do here is advance God's kingdom. The kingdom of God is bigger than any building. The kingdom of God is bigger than any one person or one place. We're grateful that God has allowed us to be a part of a kingdom work. We're not a kingdom in and of our, ourselves. I like to use the term, we're just an embassy. We're just an outpost. But you allow it to take place with the ministries that happen within the four walls of friendship and those that we continue to support out of the community with your tithes and with your offerings. A tithe is 10% of what comes into your financial control. And an offering is above and beyond that. But we here at Friendship know that it is just a seed. You are the financial steward of every single penny that comes into your control. And you should have confidence that wherever I sow a seed, whether it's a natural seed or a spiritual seed, that the ground I'm sowing it into is fertile. We invite you, examine what God is doing here. And if you can see that what we're doing is kingdom-minded, we encourage you to sow. So we want you to take that gift, take that tithe, take that offering, raise it before the Lord, and let's confess our faith in what we know God is about to do. This is the offering I bring to God, the seed of faith I sow. I give it in faith. I give it in love. I give it in obedience. I believe the promise that he has made, and I shall reap the harvest that he has promised. However, he chooses to bring it my way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we have offered you our praise, our worship. And now, Lord, we bring before you our treasure, our tithes. 
and our offerings. I pray, oh God, that you sanctify them for the use of kingdom work, that you bless the gift and the giver, bless those who have a desire, but today may not have the means. Increase our faith, increase our store of seed. In Jesus' name, amen. You're now in the hands of your ushers. Come on. Y'all sound like you're ready to go. I see you, Jacob. Jacob is one of my students from McKinley School. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Hey, how many of you know that everything that you got, everything that you're dealing with, put it in the hands of the Lord, amen? Look at your neighbor and say, this and that. Put it all in the Lord's hands.
on. Come on. Woo! Come on. This, this, this and that? Come on. Who knows what I'm talking about when I say that? Everybody got a this. But God, listen, God wants that too. That thing that, that no one else knows about. That, that thing that might be embarrassing to you. Yeah, he wants that. God, I put it all. Watch this. That's a choice. I put it all in his hands. I don't want to associate anybody with, with monkeys, so let me just say I'm not talking about, I call anybody a monkey. But I just remember, you know, was it Wild Kingdom or one of them shows? And they showed how they used to catch wild monkeys, chimpanzees. They would put a little, you know, little stuff that the monkey liked inside of a log that had like a knot hole. And the monkey would, would see it, he'd smell it, and then he'd reach in, and he'd grab whatever it was and pull his hand and put it to his face. And after the monkey got a taste of it, they would run up on the monkey once he put his hand in the hole. And they could very easily then just grab the monkey because the monkey wouldn't let go. Literally, all I had to do was let go. And sometimes we hold on to stuff. I'm not going to get up in your business, but I know that somebody, you're still holding on to something. And you're dealing with the consequences, listen carefully, of holding on to something God wants you to let go of. And just put it in his hands. It sounds so easy. But sometimes when you're so used to holding on to the fear, the anger, the doubt, the bitterness, whatever it is, sometimes it becomes comfortable. But the thing you're holding on to is the thing that's killing you. The thing you're holding on to is the thing that's stealing your joy, stealing your peace, stealing everything that God... Watch this. Sometimes we do Satan's work for him. Satan is after me. No, you just won't let go. Just let go. Father God, today I thank you for moments of grace, moments of just experiencing you. And I pray that we learn how to cherish those moments, Father, because sometimes they're far and few between. And so I pray today, oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will truly be acceptable in your sight. If you are my Lord, my God, my King, and my Savior, I bless you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, grab, grab, grab your Bible, grab your Bible app, grab the means by which you access the Word of God to the online family too. Please, have your Bibles in your hand. Have your, Bi your Bible app. Don't just depend on the words that are going to come up on the screen. Get the Bible in your hand. Get the Bible in your mouth. Raise it before the Lord, and only if you believe these words, let's say them together. This is my Bible. This is God's Word speaking to me. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. It is the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. With it I wage war against the enemy of my soul. I will fight the good fight. I will contend for the faith. I will uphold the honor of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, we've already celebrated the death and resurrection, the resurrection season again, what some would call Easter. And I really pray that you would just do some, do some background. You don't need to get all caught up in it, but you need to know like the origin of these, these holidays, these so-called holy days that people um, celebrate so that you'll be able to answer people that are very, very critical when you say things like Easter. Do you know where Easter comes from? Yeah, I, I know completely that Easter comes from, a, from Ishtar, the, a, a goddess of fertility. That's why everything around Easter deals with eggs and grass and bunnies. It speaks to fertility. It speaks to spring solstice, and that's really where that comes from. But when it comes to the resurrection, which is tied to Passover, has more to do with, with what God is doing in our lives. So just at least have that kind of knowledge. And why does, why does, why does Easter or 
the Resurrection Sunday, why does it change? Why is it different days every year? Because it has more to do with Passover, which is not necessarily a specific date on a calendar. It is in a season. Some people ask, ask you, why does it change? Well, there's a reason why. And so that's why it's not so much the date as it is about the event. You want to say that Jesus rose in July? Ah, okay, awesome. But the fact is, he got up. Deal with that however you want to. But just also always have that, that in your mind. So we've already come out of that season. And I pray you never come out of resurrection season. Because a resurrection for us is more than an event. It, it, it was an event that shapes everything about us. We live as believers in Christ Jesus because Jesus defeated death. He rose from the dead, from the grave on the third day so that we might live every day in resurrection power. That we might experience God every day. I don't have to wait another year to celebrate the resurrection because Jesus rises in me every day. Amen. I might try in, 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 in my flesh to keep him off, but the power of God in me is what I'm looking forward to. So even though we've come out of that air quote season, I still want to focus on what he's been teaching us in an upper room experience. That's a series that got started some time ago. It took a little break during the resurrection season. Um, took a little break for um, uh, Palm Sunday and took another break for Resurrection Sunday, but I've really been focused on and trying for you and to focus on the time that Jesus spent with his disciples in that upper room. The upper room event happened before the crucifixion. It happened before the resurrection. But it was a time of perhaps the most intimate setting in the Bible where Jesus sits with his disciples. It, it, it goes from John chapter 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. And it is really a majority of if not completely, it's red letters. That's just Jesus talking intimately. It's been said that the word love shows up about 42 times in John, about 12 times or 10 times or whatever the number is in chapters 1 through 12, and about 38 times in this upper room. So it's a time which just saturated with love and revelation that God has. And my desire for friendship, my desire for you as individuals, my desire for us as the corporate body of Christ is in this time of international upheaval, so many signs and things are pointing to the return of, of Jesus. And yes, it can be, be said that, 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 you know, we've been talking about the return of Christ for generations. My father's generation was talking about it. I believe that we're much closer today than we ever have been. And when you think about what the Bible says would, would come to pass, I want to be ready. I want to stay ready so I don't have to get ready. Because the Bible says that when Jesus comes, that's not the time to get ready. When he shows up, you need to be ready. Because there's parable after parable of, of the master returning home and folks weren't, weren't ready. And they became the subject of his wrath because they weren't ready. And so friendship, Pasadena, what do we do here? We equip the saints and we empower the believers so that we will begin to engage our community and by doing so we will enlarge our territory. We seek to do everything with excellence because one day we need to be a people prepared for Christ and his kingdom. And so everything that we're doing here, every message that's being preached, Every small group that's, that's being taught is to equip you, empower you, help you to get engaged, grow, do it with excellence. So when Jesus comes back, you will hear those wonderful words, well done, my good and faithful servant. But I want to go back again to the uh, upper room. And we're going to be, if God grants, grants grace, we're still going to stay here for a while. There will be times when your pastoral staff will come and, and, and kind of give, 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 give me a breather. And uh, they'll be able to speak the word of God to you. But when I come up, I, I, we're, we're going to stay in this study. Because today, we're going back to St. John chapter 14. Judas has left the room. Jesus has washed the disciples' feet. The betrayal is in full swing. 
The Bible says that when Jesus put the, the, the bread dipped in, dipped in Judas' mouth, it said that, the, that Satan entered him and that he went out to betray Jesus. And then Jesus begins this, this wonderful discourse with his disciples in a very, very intimate setting. And again, my, my prayer is that no matter how many people are in a room, no matter how large we may grow, that we never miss intimacy, intimate moments with Jesus. You can have an intimate moment with the Spirit of God in a room full of people or in a room all by yourself. Because this walk of ours is personal. No one can take you to heaven other than Jesus. No one can keep you out of hell other than yourself. Because all of these things, have the way has already been made. That's what Jesus said, I believe, the last time that, that we were here. We dealt with that passage in the beginning of uh, St. John chapter 14, where, where Jesus is telling them that he has to die. But he said, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself so that you will be where I am. And I sought to imply something in that, that Jesus is not only talking about going to heaven, and that is the end result of us being in that wonderful place. But I believe that Jesus said that wherever I am, I want you to be. Jesus is not just sitting in heaven, and yes, he is. He's seated at the right hand of God, waiting for everything to be fulfilled so that he can return to this earth as King of kings and Lord of lords and rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. That's called the millennial reign of Jesus. But he has sent us another comforter. He sent us what, what theologians would call the paraclete. He sent us another aspect of God's person in the person of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I've got to leave you in this frame. I can't just stay here on earth in this form. Because remember what Jesus said? Except the seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, meaning if it transforms, then it becomes so much more than it ever could be if it never died. French of Pasadena, you know that, that, that I've likened that, and God is going to be the one that judges the validity of this, and I believe time will bear the fruit. I believe that Friendship Baptist Church was a seed that needed to transform to become so much more than it ever had been in 130 years. And I believe that that really honors God to believe that God can take something 130 years old and do something brand new. That the God that we serve is not limited by time like we are, but God can take whatever you bring him. God can take your 65-year-old dreams and make them brand new. God can do something awesome and incredible when you allow the seasons and the transitions that he requires to happen, happen. What did Jesus say about new wine? He said, you simply can't. These are just simple, basic agricultural terms. Unless you take a seed and plant it in the ground, that seed will never grow. But if you plant it, it transforms and releases its potential. When you hold an orange seed in your hand, you are holding literally a tree. The whole tree is in your hand. You can hold possibly an entire orchard if you have enough seeds. But if those seeds don't die, if those seeds don't change, then all you'll have is a handful of seeds. And who just wants a handful of seeds? Seeds must be planted so that they can transform. Jesus said, I can't stay like this. Peter, I know you want me to hang out. Fellas, I know that you want me to stay here so I can continue to, to make a, a feast out of a lunch. Feed 5,000 with a couple loaves of, and, and a couple of fish. I know that you want me to hang out so I can open blinded eyes. I know you want me to hang out so that you'll never have problems because I'm right there by you. But if I go, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm going to do something incredible. This seed has to die so that it can produce so much more. 
And what the production of that is, is you and I. Jesus says something at the end of his little discourse in St. John chapter 14. I want to start in verse, actually, why don't I start in the right chapter? He says something at the end of that about believing in me. He starts in verse chapter 14. John, thank you. John chapter 14. That means somebody's listening. That means somebody's ready. Some of y'all didn't know where I was going and you didn't care because you know I was going to read it for you. (laughs) Thank you, Joyce, for being who you are in Jesus' name. St. John chapter 14. Shall we go to verse 12? Let's do that. Jesus is saying, after you know where I'm going, after you know the purpose for which I am going, I'm going to prepare a place in God's kingdom, in God's presence, specifically for you. And when that place is ready, I'm going to come to take you to be with me where I am. I think sometimes we just limit that to going to heaven. I believe that wherever the Spirit of God moves, wherever the name of God is called, wherever the name of Jesus can be mentioned, that's where God is. And Jesus wants you with him everywhere, all the time. What did he teach us to pray? Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth. Friendship, you've heard me say this many times, that the kingdom of God is bigger than heaven. God does not want you just to wait to go to heaven. God wants to bring the entire kingdom to you. That's what he wants us to pray, is that the kingdom, which is the rule and reign of God in the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire was vast. It reached thousands of miles and touched other continents. But the capital city was Rome. But if you belong to the kingdom, you can invoke the name of the emperor on the outskirts of the kingdom. And the authority that was given you in Rome would be yours wherever the kingdom was. God has given us authority in the earth in his name that wherever we go, we take the kingdom of God with us. How can you say that, Pastor? Because Jesus said, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I've been doing, and they will do even greater than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. I say this often. That is either the biggest joke that God played on humanity, that Jesus really didn't mean that. He just didn't mean anything. And yes, there are qualifications to this because somebody will read this and you go start asking for houses and cars and and you can't even balance your checkbook. (laughs) Come on, y'all know you asking for stuff that even if you get it, you don't know how you're going to keep it? Or or is that just my testimony? (laughs) But Jesus said that there can come a time that when we realize that wherever he is, That you will be where I am, therefore I will be where you are. So I need to be careful where I go. I need to be careful what I do. I need to be careful how I live. But then he transitions over now that we know that. Now, watch this. This is is a continuation. This entire thing is not segmented to where we're going to heaven and now he's going to talk about the Holy Spirit. No. This is a flow. Again, this is a time of an intimate setting of Jesus teaches, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If, I, if it wasn't so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place, not only in heaven, but in the realm of the kingdom, so that where I am, you will be. And when that happens, you can ask anything in my name. Why? Because you belong to the kingdom. Because you are now answerable and responsible to the King of kings and Lord of lords. So be careful what you put his name on. Be careful how you invoke his name. Be careful how you use his name. Do not take the name of the Lord in vain. Because what you might very well do is short circuit the ability and the desire of God to manifest. Let's go to chapter 15. This is where I'm going. And we're going to be here for a while. I was really wondering, Lord, with everything that 
this subject matter requires. How am I going to cram this into a single message? And I really thought about it. I said, okay, we'll just, we'll just cut some off here and cram some up there and we'll just reference. No, no, no. This, this, this has to be taught because one of the things, and we've been talking about this in our small group, one of the things that might not be taught enough in the church of Jesus Christ is the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. We talk a lot about the Holy Spirit. Oh, I felt the Spirit. I caught the Spirit. Let me tell you something. You don't catch the Spirit. You catch a cold. You can catch a baseball. You can catch, you can catch COVID. You can't catch the Holy Spirit. But we used to talk like that. I remember being in service with the mother's board up front. And every now and again, one of the mothers catch the Holy Ghost. And as a young child, that was terrifying. (laughs) Grown man rushing down the aisle, holding down a 97-year-old woman. And she's throwing them around like they're just little children. And this old mother comes, but that's the Holy Ghost, you know? Ah, I don't know. If I want all that. Now, I say that facetiously because I know, I believe there's an entire generation that believes that you can be right with God without having the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And while, and I don't want this message to become so heavy that you leave downhearted. I want you to understand what Jesus was saying. Watch what he says. He says, if you love me, uh-oh, keep my suggestions. Your Bible don't say that? That's why you got to read it for yourself. Because I could have said that and y'all would have said, cool. <laughs> if you love me, you will keep my commands. Everybody knows that in, that in this world, everybody has love languages, right? We, we talk about that. Not everybody has the same love, love language. You know, uh, Janine's love language sometimes is just just little, just acknowledgments, just little gifts, you know, planning, stuff like that. And that's so much, and she's looking at me funny, which means I must be reading the wrong book anyway. (laughs) Mine is just, you know, just, just, you know, and sometimes, fellas, sometimes you just want to be acknowledged, you know? You cut the lawn, tell me, wow, the lawn looks amazing today. (laughs) Because sometimes all we just need is a little... You know, a little pat on the head. This is not a marriage class. I probably just proved to you I need work. But (laughs) Jesus said, listen, if you love me, the love language of Jesus is obedience. You prove your love for Jesus by doing what he said. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord but don't do what I say? Why? Why do you call me baby but act a fool? That's basically what he's saying. Why do you call me honey and sugar and you acting like a horse's backside. He said, if you love me, keep my commands. And, 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 and watch this. I don't want to go down this path too far. Somebody would say, does that include the Ten Commandments? Jesus is a fulfillment of all of the Ten Commandments. Because if you love him, you won't covet your neighbor's wife. If you love him, you ain't going to kill nobody. If you love him, you will literally fulfill it. He is our Sabbath, so he is our rest. We keep the Sabbath because Jesus is my Sabbath. I find rest in him 24-7. Again, that's a conversation that we can have at a later time. But Jesus said this. He said, the greatest commandment in the law is this, to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second one is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Upon these two hang all the law and the prophets. So if you would just love God with everything and love your neighbor as you love your, yourself, if that's really the fulfillment of the law. But then Jesus said, I'm going to give you another I'm going to give you a new commandment. Not only do I want you to love people the way you want or treat people the way you want, I want you to love them the way I love them. And you know the way that Jesus loves? He loves the unlovable. He loves those that don't love him back. So we're commanded to love people that won't love us back. Woo, you got to have the Holy Spirit just for that to make sense. That's why we've got to do right to people that do us wrong. That's why we have to pray for folks that run us down. That's why we have to wash the feet of even the one that betrays you. Like Jesus said, Jesus washed the feet of Judas knowing that in a couple hours he would be the one to be responsible for his death. But he said, "If, if, if you love me, let's start there. If you love me. You'll do what I command. 
we have to realize, do I love God like that? Do I love the way, watch this, because again, you're talking about love. Life. Well, that's the way that I love. I just love, I tell you that I love you. That's how I love. Well, then you don't love me. You love you. Because you're satisfied with your kind of love and not the love that I need from you. So Jesus said, if you love me, if, if you're going to say you love me, don't say you love me and don't do what I commanded. Because under, understand the word command. Again, it's not a su- suggestion. We're commanded to forgive. We're commanded to love. We're commanded to make disciples of all nations because he's king. Yes, he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, but he's king. But he says, if you love me, you'll keep my commands and my response to you. Watch this. Obedience is essential. Obedience is not optional. You either obey. Watch this. I heard somebody put it like this. Jesus is either Lord of all or he's, Lord, he's not Lord at all. Either Jesus rules and reigns over every aspect of your life or he's not Lord. So what are those parts of our lives that we refuse to relinquish to his authority? If you love me, you'll keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. The word another does not mean another kind. It means another of the same essence. So when we're talking about it, we can talk about the Trinity at at length. We are talking about an aspect of God's personhood. God said in the beginning, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So God speaks of himself in plural form. So this person, this advocate, we refer to as the Holy Spirit. And depending upon how long you've been in church, the Holy Ghost. I used to remember even pastors arguing uh, about that. That some of y'all go to the church and you call it the Holy Spirit. You don't need no spirit. You need the Holy Ghost. (laughs) Y'all ever heard that? You got to read the King James Bible and you need to get you the Holy Ghost. Who you need is you need the power of God in your life 24-7 because that's the promise. As a matter of fact, the subtitle of, of this message is the promise of power. Jesus promises you. He says that if you obey me and prove your love to me, By obeying me, I'm going to bless you and honor you by sending another of the same kind, another advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him. Please understand this. The world cannot accept him. I'm going to spend just a little bit of time talking about what the world means because, again, that, 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 that phraseology in church is kind of, it, it means anything that's not of God, anything that is not directly connected with the leading of the Spirit is considered the world, the world function, the carnal world, the world that you and I live in and that we relate to 24-7. We relate to this world in a sensory capacity. We relate to the world with what we see. We relate to the world with what we hear. We relate to the world with our senses. And it is that world that is separate from God. Everything in the world is not overtly evil by our standards. But it is definitely tainted by sin. There are some things, that's why Scripture said, and we talked about this in our Bible study, that's why the Bible tells us in Romans uh, chapter 12 to let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Not every weight is a sin, but every sin is a weight. Not everything that you do is overtly evil. But not everything that you do honors God either. And so the world, those that are in the world, understand this, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. If you ever just want to know, Who is, and stop referring to the Holy Spirit as a what and as an it. 
Holy Spirit is a who, is a he. And Jesus actually tells you, I'm going to leave, but I'm sending another one. But then he slips this in here right in front of your, your very eyes. He said, I'm going to come. I'm not going to come in this frame because this frame, this seed has to die. But when the advocate, when the Holy Spirit returns, he is no one else than me. But he's not just me in one location. Now I can be with thousands of people everywhere, all the time, all at once. If I stay here, I can only be in Jerusalem. I can only walk down this road. But when I do, when this seed dies in its current form, it's going to produce so much more. So we need to understand something. Again, my concern is there's a generation of people that are growing up ignorant of the Holy Spirit. There's actually a passage in um, Acts chapter 19. Paul comes across some, says some disciples. Commentary writers say that they could possibly be John's, John the Baptist's disciples, but it just says disciples. But it could very well be disciples in church. And he asked them this question. Last time I asked this, this question, we baptized about 20 some odd people. First time we had ever baptized that many people. Because Paul asked this question, and I want to ask this of you. He said, have you received the Holy Spirit since or after you believed? They said, we haven't even heard about the Holy Spirit. I wonder today how many people in churches all across this country have never really heard about the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I know we talk about it because we sing about it. But I'm talking about have, have you received? Have you had a personal encounter? Come on, search your heart today and ask this question. Not that you've heard about Have you had an encounter with God? Have you had a supernatural manifestation somehow of God in your life? It may be as deep as speaking in tongues and prophesying. And by the way, I believe that that gift is a reality for the body of Christ. I'm going to go on record both online and in this house. I am not a cessationist. I'm not the kind of pastor that believes that all of the gifts of the Spirit just stopped when the full canon of Scripture was put together. You mean to tell me that the supernatural power of God that Jesus said belongs to us no longer needs to be necessary because we put together some books for you to read? When you face a demon, you just go Back up, Satan. Satan don't care nothing about you having a book in your hand. He really don't even care nothing about words in your mouth. The Bible, do you believe them? I always tell this story. I remember this, this, this vampire movie. Again, I need me some new stories. The vampire movie. Roddy McDowell, the actor that used to be in Planet of the Apes, was, was, was a priest. And he was dealing with Dracula or one of them vampire fellas. And the vampire was backing Roddy McDowell up in a corner. And Roddy McDowell reached down and pulled out his cross and held it like that. And the vampire flinched because, you know, vampires are afraid of silver and afraid of the cross. Vampire took a step forward and snatched the cross out of my man's hand <laughs> and said, you've got to believe for that to work. Oh. And then commenced to <laughs> sucking the juice out the man's body. See, Satan don't mind you quoting scripture. Satan don't mind you invoking the name of Jesus. Can I tell you about another man by the name of Sceva who was a traveling exorcist? Him and his sons, man, had a traveling roadshow going around casting out demons. But what they would say is in the name of the Jesus that Paul preached, we command you to come out. And I don't know if it ever worked, but one day he ran into a show enough demon. You do know that there's some show enough demons. There's some lightweight demons. There's some part-time demons. He ran into a full-time, 24-7, bought and paid for demon. And that demon said, hold on one, one second. He, he said, Jesus, I know. I know the real Jesus. And I know this Paul guy, but what? who are you? And one man jumped on seven of them. And I love this. It's funny, but it's not funny, but that's my sense of humor. He whoops all seven of them. They run out of the room bloody and naked. The man beat them out their clothes. Don't mess with real demons. See, some of us haven't encountered the real. 
That's why we can be satisfied with the phony. Satan hasn't run up in your face with a genuine problem that just saying a couple scriptures and nothing. Listen, I'm not diminishing the word of God. I'm saying that the world cannot operate in the spiritual. The world may know about God, but until they know him for themselves, they, they know the word of God, but do they know the God of the word? There's a lot of people that can quote scripture that don't know God. And so there's another man by the name of Simon, Simon the sorcerer. I'm going to read some things in a, in, a, in a minute, but I'm in one of these moods. There's a man in the Bible, I think it was Acts chapter 8. He was called Simon the sorcerer. And he had convinced people that he was the power of God. They actually said, this is man is the great power of God because with sorcery, not just magic, not just sleight of hand card tricks, the word sorcerer means that this man had tapped into the occult. He had tapped into the dark realm of the spirit that is against God completely. And he had fooled people. I believe that they're, help me, Father God. I believe that sometimes in churches, only God knows. I believe that some folks are operating under a spirit of sorcery. Because they've opened themselves up to a supernatural realm, but it's not the realm of God. There are realms, there are dimensions. That's why your kids today are being bombarded with portals and other dimensions, and they're being in, in, encouraged to explore that every door out there has a demon behind it. And some of the video games and some of the music and some of the, some of the I mean, even, even, even some of your, your not y'all, but some of y'all's, 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 Favorite R&B artists open up the stage and there's a huge portal. What do you think that's for? Just for your girl to come dancing out? Talking about this ain't Texas? Some of y'all don't buy cowboy hats. You ain't seen a horse in your life. I'm talking about the world now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all had no idea that that was coming, did you? But why is it important to understand the difference between the spiritual and the unspiritual, the difference between the realm of the spirit, the supernatural realm, and the ungodly realm? Go with me again, and we're going to be here for a while, so I'm not trying to, to give it all to you. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. I'm going to do a lot of reading. I'm going to pray that the Spirit of God will do the teaching. Because this is very self-explanatory. If anybody has an ear to hear, if anybody is connected to the Spirit of God, somebody, you're going to hear this, it's going to go right over your head, and I challenge you to check your connection with the Holy Spirit. Because the word is going to be very, very clear. Romans chapter 8, verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh, you could say the world there. Those who live according to the sensory world, those who are dominated by a world system that is connected to your senses, what you see, what you feel, what you smell, all of the sensory world, those of us that are dominated in this plane, this earthly, worldly plane, those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on what the flesh desires. That's not that deep, not that difficult. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. Everybody in here knows somebody that you would deem as too holy. That's why you don't invite them places. Because you know that when they come, first words out the mouth, praise the Lord. Come on, man. Ever, I mean, ever met somebody that, like you might say, just, they just, they're just never off? They're just always on. Everything is, you know, everything that's talking about God. And, and, and watch this. In the natural, that, that can be annoying. Okay, y'all got super holy right, right then. <laughs> that would have been a place for somebody to say amen so I don't feel like I'm judging everybody. But I believe what those people are trying to do, they're, they're, they're trying to stay constantly engaged in spiritual things because it is so easy to get distracted. Watch this. And it's so easy to condone it. Can we keep on reading and see what God has to say? And see whether or not this word makes us uncomfortable 
or not. Those who live according to the Spirit have their mindset of what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death. Do I need to explain death to you? I don't need to go into the Greek and the Hebrew. It means death. It means separation from God forever in not just death, but in the consequences of death. Because everybody's going to die, but you're going somewhere after you die. So the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. What? You mean thoughts and ideas that I have that may not be overtly evil, but they're simply not glorifying God, actually proves that my mind is at war with God? See, I know that we don't like thinking like that. Because after all, you know, it's just some harmless fun. And watch this. I'm not saying don't enjoy the earth. Don't, don't, don't be afraid of of enjoying what this world has to offer. The Bible says that God has given us everything to freely enjoy. It's when we enjoy them so much that they become a part of the pattern of our lives. And anything that you do more than a couple times because of habit. And habits then begin to form your actions and your attitudes. I know I should go to the gym. Then why am I still sitting on the couch? I know I should eat better, but why do I have both the salt and the butter in my hands? (laughs) I know I need to do all, so watch this, knowing about something, knowing I should read my Bible more, I should pray more, why aren't you? You know why? And it's not necessarily, it's just a fact. My mind is locked into the world system. And that mind is hostile towards God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those that are in the realm, there that word is, the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You can't soft sell that. If the majority of my day is spent thinking about anything other than what God wants for my life, I can't please God. And then how often do circumstances, because, you know, problems just pop up out of the blue, because otherwise they wouldn't be problems. And then we call on God, and we want God to move now. How much time? My dear sister said that she didn't have to call the name of Jesus, because she was already talking to him. Y'all follow? How many times do problems come up, and we call on Jesus? We ain't been talking to him. Again, I don't want to dog out Beyonce, but, but some of y'all know more of the, the, the lyrics to her songs than you do the verses that can save you from your destruction. And you know why? Because you sing them all the time. You play it all the time. They're not, again, not everything is overtly evil, but you are training your mind. I had this thing in my mind, even this morning, and, and if I say it, but I have to to make my point. Some reason this morning, I could not get because I'm happy song out of my mind. Because I'm happy, clap along. I'm trying to pray, man. And that song just kept kept coming up. You know what I had to do? I had to replace it. I had to turn on some gospel music. I had to begin to pray. And I watch this. But that's how we live. It's so easy. It's so easy, and your mind is ready to receive. Watch this. Your mind simply reacts to the information that you put in it. And what happens is it tends to crave what the world wants. Your mind is hungry for information, but it's used to getting the garbage. That's why you know what's up with P. Diddy (laughs) more than you know what's up with Paul in the upper coast of Ephesus. Come on, somebody, because it's there all the time. That's why you know the latest TikTok trend and not the greatest Holy Ghost move. Are are y'all following me? 
Because the carnal mind is hostile towards God. It does not conform to God because it can't. Stop trying to make yourself. That's why the scripture says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye rather transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can now prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will, will of God. Watch this. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please you, however. Come on, I'm talking to Friendship Pasadena right now. You are not in the realm of the flesh, but in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Jesus talks about a time when there's going to be some people standing. The Lord, I preached in your name. Work miracles in your name. Went to church all the time. Led a small group. I was engaged in all that. And people are going to hear, I'm sorry. Never knew you. Lord, you, how can you say that? Because your mind ain't right. On the flip side of that, again, I need better stories. When I was in the world, we used to talk about, I need to get my head right. Which means you had to go ingest something. And when you got it in you, everything was all right. Had a conversation with a dear sister. Won't call her name. We were talking about getting our heads right back in the day. And then she ran into Sister Jean Douglas. Come on, she'll change your mind. And Mother Dorothy Evans. At the same time. And long story short, the, the, this, this sister said, when she got up off the floor, <laughs> life had changed. Speaking in other languages, speaking in supernatural tongues, because God changed the frequency. The carnal mind is hostile. So be careful what you listen to on your way home today. Be careful what you listen to all week long because it may not be overtly evil, but it's, it is of this realm and this dimension. And the more time you spend in this realm and in this dimension, you go farther from God, by, Brother Bill said, by default. It's no effort. It's not like you're trying to flee God. It's just you're not feeding your spirit. One more and we're done. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. And again, I'm just saying what God said. You may say, Pastor, what does this have to do with, with Jesus saying he's going to give us the Holy Spirit? You need to know that your carnal mind will fight against that spirit. God wants to give it to you, but do you want to receive? Are you willing to do what it takes to walk in the spirit? I believe, again, there's a generation of people who believe that they are going to heaven and they are right with God who do not even know that there is a Holy Spirit. They just know that I feel good, and that's good enough. They just know that I'm really trying, and that's good enough. No, no, no. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has really given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. You know my, why a lot of people still struggle in church? It's because they're trying to make sense in their natural mind of something that can only be understood with a spiritual mind. That's why people can read the Bible and still treat people like dirt. That's why people can go to church and raise their hands and cuss you out in the parking lot. Y'all know them folks? Don't look around. Just eh. And if it's you, just look straight ahead. Nobody know I'm talking about you. But watch this. But that, I mean, even while that's funny, that's the world that we live in. How, how can you come out of an encounter that you said was with God and then lie on me in the parking lot? 
How can you say that you love God and then run my name down when I win when you go home? Where is the, what spirit is that? That's how we know the kind of spirit that is governing our lives because, again, we come to church to catch it. And just like you catch it, if you can, ke- if you can catch it, you can drop it. Ooh, that was deeper than I thought it was going to be. And maybe that's wrong with a lot of folks. They come to church and catch, and then they go outside and drop. Child of God, that's why they do you like they do. That's why people are suffering from what folks call church hurt. Because, broad stroke, Church folk catch the Spirit all the time. But they're just as quick to drop it when they don't get their way. It's not about the kingdom, it's about me. Lord, help me with this. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit, but considers them foolishness and can't understand because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgment about all things. You know how folks say that you can't judge me? Sure I can. Because I'm judging things by the Spirit of God. If I'm judging you out of my, my flesh, I'm just as guilty as you are. But when I know what God says, and I reach a conclusion based upon God's Word, you know a tree by its fruit. If you sour all the time and you round and yellow all the time, you probably are a lemon. That's not a judgment. That's an observation. But if you're sweet all the time, you know, you're a little orange and, you know, just full and and I just like it, you quite possibly are an orange because you know a tree by its fruit. Oranges can be bitter. Even lemons can have a little sweetness to them. But a believer in Christ Jesus, when God has given you of his spirit, there will be evidence in your life. The carnal mind is hostile. Just realize that. A mind that you constantly fill with information, entertainment, things that, again, aren't overt. You have a moral compass. That's why you don't listen to to the extreme form of of godliness, of ungodliness. But you got enough in there. There's enough in there to take your mind in the wrong direction. Jesus says, if you obey me, if you love me, You'll obey me. And if you obey me, I will give you of my spirit who will be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth and he will guide you. This is where we're going in the next few weeks. How can you know that you have the spirit? The spirit will lead you into all truth and he will remind you of everything that I have said. Have you ever been in a place and you're about to say something? or you're about to do something, and you hear your mama's voice. You hear your daddy saying, don't do that. That'll happen when the Spirit of God is in you. Tell you this last story. I was in a bookstore standing in front of, can I be vulnerable just for a minute? Don't hold this against me. But I was standing in a bookstore in front of the magazines. And this one, I was, I was working out more. Now I just exercise just to make sure everything works. But I was working out, you know, trying to wear the tightest stuff I could wear, and, you know. And so Sports Illustrated had an article, uh, uh, you know, the, about fitness, like fit over 40 or whatever it might have been. And I wanted to look at it. But it was in the swimsuit edition. So I'm standing there in Palm Springs, 
Don't nobody know me in Palm Springs. <laughs> Important article, man. I want to, you know. I, the, how many of you know that you'll rationalize when you want to do what you know you shouldn't do? I'll just, I'll just flip past the pages. And as I'm standing there, all by myself, Janine was looking at something. I said, involuntarily, move. And I stood there a couple more seconds. And I said again, move. All right. I believe that was no one other than Spirit of God. I could have said no. I could have said, I just want to read the article. And I would have literally defied what I said I wanted God to do in my life. Here's your challenge over the next week as we investigate and go a little bit deeper. I want to live farther than I plan on going today. I want you to start realizing how much of your mind you occupy with everything other than God. Just kind of put it like a ratio. How much of my day from the time I wake up to the time I lay my head down was given over to God? And I mean anything. Driving across the freeway, being at work, listening to the radio, reading your emails, reading, watching the news, watching your favorite show, Netflix and chilling. How much of that time feeds your flesh? Not evil, just not God. And how much of your time is given to having a mind of the Spirit? And I believe that somehow, somehow we'll be shocked. I don't want to offend anybody. But if you get on a scale, Help me, Father God. This is where I get myself in, in trouble. If you get on the scale and you say, oh, my God, I'm overweight. That didn't happen last night, bro. It's been a process. And now I either can embrace it and get bigger pants or say, I need to do what I need to do to get back in shape. Some of us, spiritually, spiritually, are overweight. There's a lot of excess that is clogging up your spiritual arteries and it is slowly killing you because the mind apart from God is death. But the mind by the Spirit is life. And then the choice is yours. Will you continue down that path where you're going to need a, a spiritual heart transplant? Or are you going to say, I'm going to right the ship. I'm going to get some of the sugar out of my diet. I'm going to get some of the salt out of my mind. I'm going to get some of these songs out of my, my head. I'm going to get some of these lyrics. And I'm going to start spending more time. And watch this. It's a process. But it's a choice that you make. Jesus gave you the promise of power. The question is, will you walk in it? Promise of power, watch this, because Pentecost is coming. This is in preparation for, for Pentecost. I want you to be ready when Pentecost comes. Because my prayer is that the promise of God's glory manifesting in this house may just very well show up in Pentecost. Because this is a, there's so many things are happening. Man, I can't go down this path. So many things are happening in the realm of the Spirit that are proving that Jesus is coming soon. And I want to be so full with the Spirit of God that I can just simply shed this body like a loose suit and be out of here and not be holding on to anything. So what are you going to do? In Jesus' name, my, my prayer is that you begin the process. Take a spiritual assessment. How much of my day? And I know it's necessary. You've got to read your emails. You've got to go to work. You've got to keep a roof over your head. Those are the necessary, essential things. But how much more time do you spend just satisfying this? 
Not with evil stuff, just with stuff. And your spirit is sitting there starving. Can I get a little word in? Can I get a little more prayer in? And if you'll do that, I guarantee your life will change. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, the conversation of your spirit cannot be minimized. It cannot be rushed. It cannot be consumed in one city. We have to determine, Father God, that we are going to change our spiritual diet. That we are either going to continue to ingest the things of the world that separate us from you or we are going to take conscious steps to taste and see that you are good. I ask you, Father God, to bring this word to fruition in everybody's life and it should be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And praise God. Somebody need to thank God because God is about to put you on a different path. God's about to challenge you in a different way. But here's the main challenge. Where are you right now? Right now in your walk with God. Do you kind of hang out? Do you visit? Do you know about God or do you have a relationship with Him? A relationship begins by saying, Jesus, I need everything in me that's not like you to die. I've tried this thing on my own far too long And I'm no closer to you than ever have been. I confess with my mouth today that you are my Lord. I make you my Lord, which means that you now can tell me what to do, where to go, what to eat, and what to say. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Right here today, you can be saved. The trajectory of your life can change with one simple decision. I want Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. And then also, now that you become that person, you need to hang out. One more story. I can work out at home, or I can work out at the gym. I usually don't do what I'm supposed to do at home. Because on one side of the room is my push-up bar and my dumbbells. On the other side is my lazy boy and a 65-inch TV. And I so often find myself in this position as opposed to this position. Same room, but it's a choice. So choose today. Are you going to trust God or not? But you need to be in a fellowship. I work out differently at the gym because I can say, hey, bro, I need a spot. Come help me get this off my chest. And when I ask you to spot me, I don't need a cheerleader. I don't need you to tell me one more. I don't need you to tell me, come on. I need you to get this off me. Because I will fire you from a job you never had if you make me make sounds I don't want to make. But that's what it means. Friendship. We're here to to spot you. We're here to help you lift beyond your own capacity. We're here to bear each other's burdens. We're here to carry each other's loads. Not your responsibilities, but something that's too. So if you want a family like that, why don't you become a part of the Friendship Pasadena Church family? We can all be stronger together if you become a part of this. But first and foremost, get saved. Receive Jesus as your Savior. Secondly, why don't you become a part of the friendship family? As we all stand to our feet, if God is speaking to your heart, won't you come? Won't you come and get saved? Won't you come and walk with us as we walk with God? Hallelujah. Today, today, it will never, it will never. Three weeks? Come on, the blood. Can we sing that one time from the top? Oh, the blood that Jesus, that Jesus shed for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. Oh, the blood that gives 
gives me strength from day to day it will never lose while you're on your feet for those of you that are believers in Christ Jesus today Jesus broke bread with them in that upper room experience and everything changed in that moment what used to be tied to the Old Testament sacrifice of the sacrificial lamb that took away their sins from one year backwards Jesus said this now is not just about what's behind you it's about what's in front of you also Father God in the name of Jesus as we have sat around your feet today like the disciples in the upper room you told us Lord that if we love you you will keep your commands and then you would grant us the power that we need to overcome every obstacle as we prepare oh God to remember you to commemorate your suffering by communing with one another I pray that you sanctify these elements right now I pray that you take this cup oh Lord and remind us that you shed your blood for us you gave your life for us because without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sins and when we partake of this wafer on top Lord I pray that you remind us that it was your body that was broken, crucified, butchered, beaten, and bloodied for us. Let us examine ourselves. And if we're not ready, Father, if we're simply going to go back to a life of sin on purpose, then I pray that you let this cup pass from us. Because you said, O oh Lord, you'll hold us accountable. So forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says that the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, said, take any, this is my body, broken for you. After they'd eaten, Jesus took the cup and said, This now is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus said, I shall not drink henceforth of the fruit of the vine till I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. All of you drink of it. They sang a hymn. They went out and waited for the power of Almighty God. We're going to sing a verse, then we're going to go out. And we're going to change the world in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all. Oh, I know the power is yours. Go into power today. Tell somebody I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Jesus died. I know 